Hi guys and welcome to the Business As Unusual show. It is episode 53, would you believe? We have started this uh, at the initial lockdown and we are still going strong. Every week we are here on a Wednesday at uh, 4.30. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Uh, my name's Luke, I'm the CEO of Sleeping Giant Media and Giant Campus. We focus on getting relevant traffic to our client's website. So if you're here, uh, please do check out our content. We've got loads of stuff to help you make those first steps into digital marketing or to take your mar digital marketing uh, to the next level. Today's show, um, like all other shows, is to get to know somebody, understand what they've been up to uh, during lockdown, hopefully share some ideas, some inspiration um, with other businesses as well to, hope, to hopefully feel um, isolation a little bit less isolating. Let's have a look at what is going on in the news this week. It's been uh, it's been an interesting uh, news week. Um, so, so it's been a wild week already with uh, Boris and many of the cabinet members of parliament back in isolation. Oh dear, oh, at least they get to uh, test out the test and trace app, so that's always a, a positive. And uh, a bit of positive uh, news, well at least for some of us, the Vicar of Dibley will be doing a Christmas show for lockdown this year, so that is good news, hooray. And 2020 has been full of oddities, but nothing can beat the style and innovation of these new Covid helmets. I'll take one of those for every single day of the week. Wowzers. Um, and in my latest at attempt to improve my productivity, I've started a new daily routine and I'm up, I'm, I'm da I'm on day four of my 4am starts and vlogging as I go, just to you know, add some madness to this already mad situation. With two weeks of lockdown left, maybe, <laughs> get your COVID helmets at the ready. It's time for another business as unusual. Welcome back. Uh, welcome to the Business As Unusual show. If you've got questions, comments as we go, please do put them in the chat. Uh, we'll be able to have a look at those and hopefully put them to our guest today. We have a fantastic guest in Laura Davidson, Labour councillor. So let's introduce Laura right now. Laura, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, Luke. Thanks very much for having me. I'm fine. Thank you very much. You. Working at home and uh, yeah, getting through things like uh, like everybody else. Fantastic. And what could you give us a bit of an introduction to sort of yourself and the work that you do as well? Yeah, so I am, um, as you said, I am a Labour councillor for um, Folkestone Central Ward, uh, which is part of Folkestone and High District Council, essentially the town centre uh, of Folkestone. Mm -hmm. um, and I was elected in May of 2019. So I've been doing it for a year and a half now, um, and obviously it's been a, a real sort of roller coaster <laughs> of a period of time, Corona coaster. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think I've heard it <laughs> referred to, you know, nobody could have predicted the things that have happened during this period of time. And uh, yeah, so not only has it been a kind of steep learning curve, I think, for all the new councillors, um, that were elected at that time, but there have been all of these things to to kind of contend with as well, um, as everybody has been having to do during this time, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, you obviously you started the role with one sort of idea of what that might look like, and then suddenly it's all it's all changed. What what are sort of the, the things that you've been doing to try to sort of adapt to the the kind of the new world that you you were faced as as the sort of the um, the virus has kind of you know taken taken hold and changed the way that we all we all have to behave. Yeah, well, I mean, it has for everybody, hasn't it? You know, it, it's a huge upheaval. Um, from from the point of view of the kind of uh, council meetings, mm. we haven't had, there haven't been any physical council meetings uh, since March of this year. Yeah. So we've been meeting, meeting virtually, um, which is, is not quite the same. It's slightly odd sort of sitting in your kitchen <laughs> in the also being in a council meeting at the same time I think it puts its stresses and strains uh, on people in the same way that you know everybody is trying to use 
technology and uh, it's got its positives but it's also got its minuses yeah. it's just not quite the same as being with other human beings um so i think that's been the kind of major challenge really mm. um you know before we would sort of be running regular surgeries where we could meet with people obviously that's not been possible during this period of time mm. you know we would out and knocking on people's doors and, and chatting to people that's not been possible during this period either. Mm. So we had to find other ways to, to do those things, um, either virtually or, you know, um, in the ways that we can, in the, you know, in safe ways during this period of time. Yeah. So, yeah, it has been a challenge. Is it of interest? Has there been any bits that, um, from a logistic perspective, so as you said, you, you know, we've all been forced into this change to try to use technology to to communicate when you know the other the sort of the normal channels that we use aren't available. Is there anything that you're actually saying? Well, this this actually can be more effective in the, in the political world in the sense of you know we you know we've spoken about this a lot from a business perspective. I just wondered actually from from your perspective if there's anything that that you've had to do that actually has worked out potentially better that could be something that has carried forward as well. I think um, I'm a I'm a trade unionist, and um, I would say in terms of sort of trade union uh, activity and meetings that I've been involved with, actually, in some ways, there's been higher participation mm. from people during this period of time. I think partly because there's more flexibility for people. If you don't have to be in a specific, you know, geographic location at a particular time, but you can kind of join a Zoom call while you're out for a walk or whatever it may be, it's it's kind of easier for people from that point of view. Yeah. So I think there is a benefit in that way. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Certainly, there is flexibility for people. How does it work in terms of... Course, not everybody has access to the technology, of course. So you know, that is also a huge mm. issue that we've seen. And you know, we have to really think about that because we can't have a, a kind of digital divide situation in which part of the population can't participate in you know in in all kinds of different things that just isn't that just wouldn't be right no absolutely yeah it might, it might skew the sort of the viewpoint might it in the sense you might actually get a different demographic more involved in in the conversation compared to yeah, it, it being accessible to everybody yes um what what sort of things do you think um in terms of this, the structure of, of meetings when it ca the council meetings because again in the business world it's really sometimes quite formal the the um, uh, sort of the Zoom element to it, because actually, um, you know, it's really it's really kind of um, everyone has to take their turn because you can't have that kind of open forum. Has it changed the sort of the dynamic of meetings that you've been in, or is or is that just the way it was previously? A bit, it was, I guess, a bit more formal prior to prior to lockdown, anyway. Um, well, there is a sort of formal structure, um, but I, I suppose we've all had to adapt to using the kind of hands raised. Mm buttons rather than you know just um using the the, the sort of physical systems yeah. that were there before um i've got so, i've got a good um i've got a good one if you want to spice up the uh the next one i've, I've been trying to try and trick a few people with this one so you might be able to get away with this one is if you just tell them there's a new feature on zoom if you wave your hand like this it recognizes your hand being raised and then it automatically raises your hand so you can kind of get people just waving randomly at the camera for quite some time before, before they realize that obviously you just you just kind of made that up so Again, might something just to spice up the uh, the the meetings potentially. So. I think one of the ways people have been sort of spicing up the meetings is by is through their backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. um, we've seen some quite entertaining choices of uh, of backgrounds in some of the meetings. Not not necessarily the wisest of choices sometimes. <laughs> yeah. um, uh -huh. And you get you know a sneak preview into into people's uh, own working at home arrangements. Yeah, absolutely. Which, you know, obviously have virtual backgrounds other people just say oh it's fine I'm kind of over it you know I am where I am yeah, so absolutely um what question around um originally what what got you into politics what was the sort of the you know the, the driving force to kind of to get you into the job that the role that you're in at the moment what was the sort of the driving force behind that um well I kind of I grew up really in a political family and I think that had a big um, impact on me really mm. I think about um, and then I think um, as I sort of got older and then you know was getting involved with things uh, and getting involved with community activity 
I just felt that the way that we need to change things, we need to have voices within um, the bodies that are making decisions. Yeah. So, you know, we need to have the ability to vote on important issues um, within councils uh, at every level, within parliament, um, with, within all those structures. Um, and uh, and so, you know, I, I wanted to um, to try to do that, really. Um, but it's obviously a it's always a community and a collective effort. Mm. It's it's not some just someone sitting in a council room can do by themselves. You know, these are these are things that a community has to do together. And we've got absolutely brilliant people working across the community to try and improve things and you know change people's lives. And uh, that that's the real kind of privilege and enjoyment of of doing the the job really. Fantastic. And um, I, I can I can only imagine the. Uh the dinner conversation in the uh, Davison household that might have been uh, an interesting an interesting conversation and uh, probably heated so uh, we're going to move quickly on to the very very tenuous uh, which is now oh it is loaded thank god um, so we have now got the the tenuous link quiz which is tied to your name okay so we're going to and i think there's a few related questions to folks in here as well so we're going to see how you get get on here let's have a look um, and this goes, this, as you said, we, Folkestone is, is obviously a kind of a wonderful place. It's also uh, one of the sunniest places in the UK. But how much sunshine do we get, and how much? What does that mean? Is it for fifth, one thousand? Sorry, one hundred and fifty thousand minutes, eighty-two days, three months, or two thousand hours of sunshine? What do you think? I don't. I don't even know how. Why they're all different metrics? I don't quite understand that. But it just confuses me. I think so. Um, I I'm guessing three months. Three months of sunshine. A whole that's a lot of that is a lot of sunshine. It is in fact two thousand hours. I don't know actually what that. Okay. If someone's got, if someone's got a calculator or a very good brain for maths. You can work out what that would be in days, but I don't know off the top of my head. But that's still a lot of sunshine as well, with the uh, the ground on the leaves designed to be part of the town's sunniest spot, which is it does look amazing, doesn't it? In the sun in the summer, the leaves particularly is just it's, stunning. Folks, it is a lovely. Live. Yeah, no, we, we, obviously our office is just down um, at the top of the Civic Centre, so we are very, very close to the Lees. It's just a fantastic lunchtime walk, which is uh, something I took for granted before. I will never take it for granted again after this lock, after lockdown. Um, moving on to the next question, let's see what we've done here. In 1909, Emily Davison sued the wardens of Strangeways Prison for mistreatment. How much did she get? Oh, I don't. I don't know the answer to this. I, have, I don't know how, how much did... you would possibly know the answer to this one, um, but I can tell you it was forty shillings, which is apparently twenty eight p in twenty twenty. <laughs> so she didn't. She didn't do well with that. Um, but yeah, I, d I did a quick Google as well to work out what that was worth. It's about thirty eight pounds if you apply, if you applied inflation to that um, over the years as well. So it was again not a particularly big win. Um, let's have a look at the next question. Which plant do you relate to most, Laura? There's a clue. Cheese plant. The cheese plant. Okay. That's a no brainer. Hundred percent. So why? So why? Why the cheese plant? Um, I, I like cheese. Love like cheese. Okay, that's, that's fair. Enough. Um, apparently there was a correct answer to this question, despite that being a question <laughs> over to you. There were, apparently there was a correct, a correct answer, um, which was the name Laura is a feminized, a feminized form of. Laurus, Latin for bay laurel plant, which the Greco-Roman era was used as a symbol of victory, honour or fame. So the name represents the embodiment of victory and strength, which I thought was pretty okay. cool. I didn't realise it was going to be like a classical education question. No, I didn't. I have to say it is a bit of a random one. I sort of I look at the slides, I'm like, wow, OK. Uh, but I think that was a good one, though, because hopefully, number one, that might be something that, that you didn't know and now you do know. And obviously to have your name associated with... Uh, victory and strength, no bad thing. So that's uh, hopefully hopefully a bonus of this quiz already. <laughs> um, I've looking at question number four, which of these doctors do you, Laura, share a link with? The first the one, first Peter one. Davison. Correct, the fifth doctor. Um, and Folkestone has been named as blanked. Any ideas? Uh, uh, the coolest... Uh, coolest place 
Um, give me a, give me a hint. It's to do, it was in the paper recently. It was about, it was from a, um, a, a company, well, I, I want to say real estate company, but that's the American version of it, an estate agent company, a, la a large online estate agent company. And Folkson has been named as something to do with the uh, the places to live a place to live i believe okay yeah. one of the best places yeah it is kent's most sought after location according to right move i believe that That's... i think it was top with 80% of people moving out of london to kent chose folkestone i think it was um, yeah top of the top of the charts at the moment and i also heard anecdotally from one of our team today that they, one of their friends who lives um, quite close to folks in West, sold their house within 30 minutes of putting it on the market, which is impressive. Really? Yeah. So shows you the uh, shows you the kind of the good vibes happening in folks, and um, and I think probably the coronavirus has probably sped that up as people are looking for a little bit more kind of space outdoors as well. Um, yeah. And that concludes our tenuous link. Was it worth it? Probably not, but. Um, I have completely lost track of time. We are well past it, but it is, belatedly, the halfway point. It's the halfway mark. Social media, is it really worth it? Um, I'd love to talk to you about that subject, but I can answer the question right now. The answer is no. No, I'm just kidding. We no longer go online to fulfill a need, to complete an action, to buy something. We kind of live our lives. You know, we're always connected. We've become very, very good at ignoring the stuff that we're not interested in. As advertisers and marketers, we really have to think carefully about what does doing it right actually mean. We have massive reach and a huge potential audience, but we don't have the attention that we once had. Welcome back. There is, oh, I'm just slightly blurred there. Um, that was a uh, promo video for uh, one of the talks that we're delivering at the London B2B event. That's two days. Um, the guys have been doing that today and they'll be back again tomorrow. So if you are looking to subscribe to an online event, we obviously we can't do these ones in the, the real world at the moment, but the uh, London B2B is kind of pressing on virtually. Um, it's been pretty good fun apparently. So some really busy and uh, sort of large numbers of people attending it. So um, yeah, so do if, if you're about do check that one out. Um, let's jump back. So, Laura, one of the things I wanted to throw out there. Firstly, hi to Lucy, Lucy Clocky on Facebook. Good to see. You. Hi, Lucy. Hope you're doing well. Um, and also, Joni, number one destination for Londoners to buy. Yeah, it's, that would have. I think that was. That was I, I think would give you a point for that if you were in the, in the quiz as well. Um, just a question around um, American politics. Obviously, we're seeing some interesting things happening in America at the moment. Um, what do you think the the world is either learning or taking from the situation in America at the moment? Um, well, that's a good question, isn't it? Um, I mean, it's been such an unpredictable period of time. Um, I think um, hopefully things are going to be more stable going forward. Um, I think it's been really positive to see the high levels of turnout that there have been and engagement um, and listening to young people um, talking about the election um, and who clearly got involved um, in it mm. and people, young people who wouldn't have been able to vote uh, in the last US election but can vote this time and have taken that seriously and used that vote. I think that's really encouraging and really inspiring. Yeah, so I mean, there's obviously some some interesting things relating to American politics, obviously, with, with the kind of the controversial uh, or controversy surrounding kind of Donald Trump and his approach to it. But actually what you're saying is, you know, that controversy in itself has, has potentially uh, brought people into the conversation that may not have engaged in politics previously. Yeah, I mean, I think the the uh, the new vice president, who it's who it's brilliant to see um, being elected into that position, mm -hmm. said in her um, first sort of speech that she did, um, she recognised the fact that people have campaigned and campaigned and raised issues in the most adverse circumstances over the last four years, 
And then she said, and at the end of that, you did the most important thing, which was you voted. Mm. And, I, and I, that has a lot of resonance, I think, for us here, because at times it can seem pretty bleak, the things that we're dealing with. Mm. Um, but, but we have people who are campaigning day after day on these issues you know, who are in incredibly um, resilient and just keep going in the most difficult circumstances. And we have other people who are getting involved with that to, to support it. And you keep going with these things and you keep going with these things. And if you can stay optimistic, actually, you, you can see that things can change and things can Im improve and change for the better. Mm. And that's been demonstrated, you know, through the voting process. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, so there's some. So for, every cloud has its silver lining, and all that is applied to some of the challenges that they face. Well, one of the things that um, obviously you, you touched upon it there. Obviously, we're in some really challenging situations at the moment. Um, and you, there was a recent study around um, loneliness that you mentioned before when we were, we were brief, uh, sort of briefly chatting pre-show. Uh, what, what sort of what was the sort of findings of that of that study? And, and what again is there anything that we can take or be aware of to help? Um, you know, to help try to address those challenges that it, that it pulled out. Yeah, so this is something that's been covered in the news today, so people might might see it uh, later, um, saying that this, this month particularly has been a very lonely month, um, and there were figures around the proportion of people who have said that they uh, always or often feel lonely. Um, and actually young people were particularly highlighted as a group that have felt lonely during this uh, period of time. And I, and I think, you know, you might, if you think about loneliness, you might think, oh, uh, you know, it, it relates to older people. But actually anybody can feel lonely in their yeah. lives. And, uh, you know, for young people, the challenges that, that they're facing at the moment are really severe. You know, not being able to have that social interaction with your friends in the same way is really, really tough. Yeah. Um, and there were some very sort of moving uh, interviews I saw earlier with some young women um, that were spoken to as part of the study. Um, some some young women who, um, for example, had just had a baby mm. during this period of and found themselves extremely isolated because those support groups that might ordinarily be there yeah, haven't haven't there and they've not had the support of their families in the same way as as they might hope to yeah. so i think it's been a really tough period of time mm. for people uh, across the board but but all particular groupings um i think have, have really suffered yeah. too so in a way what this crisis has exposed is a lot of the, the problems that were there anyway but they have really kind of been magnified by this yeah. um and I hope that coming out of this crisis, we can do something about those things. Yeah. What, what sort of things, you know, looking at that, what are the sorts of things that you think could we could we do to try to help support that? Or is there something, again, any um, any sort of advice or tips that, that could, again, potentially help people to, to feel less lonely? And I know it's very challenging at the moment with it when, you know, almost by definition, we're being told to kind of keep to ourselves at the moment. But what, what are the things that we can do to try to, to sort of move that forward and help? I think I think what was quite impressive about um, the interviews that I was watching earlier was actually all the young women spoken to had done something about the situation that that they were in. That they were in. So one had organised um, this sort of socially distanced walking um, with other women who were in that situation. So they'd they'd kind of self organised uh, things that would that would help. And those kind of examples are really powerful, I think, where people, you know, do things and, and can take action, which is, is really not easy when you're also feeling quite vulnerable and isolated yourself. But where people do do these things and they do all the time, mm. they are brilliant and inspiring examples that other people can then go, oh, actually, yes. And, and people can get involved with those things and then you can sort of grow them. And these examples then get picked up, say, in other parts of the country mm. and and if you, if we, that's really where change is, is going to come from, is those kind of grassroots things that people are doing every day within our, within our local communities. Yeah, and, and giving and hopefully giving them that, that stage to talk about that. And as you say, kind of that share that idea that then might, um, 
you know, help inspire someone else to do similar. Uh, just to jump into chat and um, mm -hmm. comment from Dan Locke. Good to see you again, Dan. Hope all is well. Um, well said. Many new mums are feeling very isolated right now. Yeah, I think probably um, some first-hand experience there. Um, it's, yeah, really, really challenging time. We're going to move very quickly to something hopefully a little bit more motivational. I'm going to get rid of this one. And we're going to go to status quo. So there's some, uh, there's some interesting quotes today. Um, and it is your, it's up to you now, Laura, to decide which one um, you would snog, which one would you marry, and which one would you avoid. So it's a great quote. You'd love the quote or avoid uh, the quote. Fairly obvious there. So let's have a look at the quotes that we've got. So first up, it is all, uh, it's always seems impossible until it's done. Nelson Mandela. Love it. That one. Personally. Sorry. Um Barry. Oh, straight away off the back. Hang on, we've got to see the other ones first, but that is a pretty good one, isn't it? It's a, it's a oh, great quote. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think the second one's going to change your mind on this one. Um, never let anyone treat you like a yellow starburst. You're a pink starburst. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. And the third quote is, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way from Napoleon Hill. So those are the three quotes. Yeah. We were, you were quite excited about the first one. Uh, which was, it always seems yeah. impossible until it's done. Second one, never let anyone treat you like a yellow starburst. You're a pink starburst. And finally, if you can, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. So what, where, where are they uh, sitting? Which one's the one, where do you want to start? With the one that you hate or love or the one in the middle? Well, I think I'm going in order. So I'm going marry, avoid, snog. Marry, avoid, snog. So yeah, so what, what is it about the, the first one that you, you absolutely love? I think that's, I think that's right. You know, you, you, um, there often seem to be situations where you think, oh, this, you know, how is this going to be sorted out? And you can get a bit pessimistic. Yeah. And then people power comes in and things change. Absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and hopefully, I mean, this is obviously, you know, looking at looking at the, the vaccine conversation. I mean, that that's um, potentially, it seemed impossible until it's done, I guess. Yeah, and how, you know, what, what positive news we've had around that over the last week or so. Mm. It's, um, it's really a kind of tribute, isn't it, to the work that's been going yeah, on. Yeah, very much so, um, yeah. Shows can be cheap, you know. Yeah. It's great. Um, and there's a really interesting story around uh, the the female scientist actually who pioneered that treatment as well. It's a really um, really good article I read about how um, almost this, this sort of the, the approach that she took to do it was dismissed for years, for years, for years, and, to, and she kept on persevering until finally um, she made it work, and now obviously tied it down to the uh, uh, the vaccine for the coronavirus. So it's again a really kind of inspiring story that isn't just something that's you know happened overnight. It's, there's there's years and years that have gone into um, pioneering that treatment that, that hasn't um, that hasn't existed until until now. So that's um, yeah, really really good. Um, any any quotes that you particularly live by? Is there anything that you're that you sort of carry around? Um, not so much a, qu a quote maybe, but just the word crisis, which we you know think about a lot. Mm. The uh, one of the meanings of the word crisis is a turning point. Okay. So I think about that quite a lot because in in a time of crisis there there is also possibility of changing things and and improving things. Mm. So no nobody wants to be in the situation that that we are in and many people are suffering, you know, hugely in this crisis. Mm. But this opportunity coming out of it that we don't have to go back to, you know, the old normal which for a lot of people was pretty awful yeah. there is to build something that's better absolutely reinvent the future a crisis opportunity as we like to say <laughs> one of our teams combined the two words and that is <laughs> something that features a lot in our in our conversation oh that's a, that's a crisis opportunity right there let's uh let's see what we can kind of do with that <laughs> fantastic well um thank you very much for your time laura it's been fantastic having you on the show we are absolutely out of time but um and we could have we could have carried on for a, a long time but thank you very much for your time thanks a lot luke it's been a pleasure yeah. um and guys that is it from us today um i don't know where the time goes we will be back again next week for yet another show as we move on to episode 54 we have bradley 
um, Hatchet from Network My Club, those guys did a fantastic job of events in the real world. Uh, they have moved to the virtual world and have got some fantastic technology that they've been uh, using to make those events really kind of seem uh, seamless and been a lot of fun. So we're going to hear from Bradley how he's been working to pivot his business over the last eight months. And we'll be back again next Wednesday at 4.30. It's been a mad week. The world's getting crazier every single day. There's some light at the end of the tunnel. But for all of us, it's just business as unusual. Thanks very much.